Okay, what I'm going to do now is, and you don't have to worry about this, I'm going to load in a data set which actually represents your first uh, class exercise. So I'm going to come here and it will ask me which type I want to open and I will say data. And I am going to run up here to my removable disk and I need to find my SPSS class. Mm -hmm. And quick start data. Don't need to worry about how to do do this yet. Okay. What I've done here is just load in my data file that I'd stored, and I can tell you in the handout that I have on NSPSS will show you. And, and this is actually the same thing that you'll be doing for your first assignment for the class, so it's it's kind of like I'm giving you your first credit free. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> You know, yeah, this, you know, I can see you're saying, I'm not saying, you know, this is the kind of class I really like, where they tell you everything and you don't have to, right, I know how you feel. Um, anyway, it, what I have here are, is a data set with simply three variables in it, and the first variable I changed from the ver, top, the ver title that was at, on top to subject, because that's my subject number. The second variable I entered was gender, uh, and I coded that using something you learn about the statistics called effect coding or dummy coding. I like effect coding. I don't like the word dummy in statistics. It just doesn't ring true. But effect coding where one indicates a female respondent and two indicates a male respondent. And then the third variable I labeled IQ, which just represents the IQ for that person. So for person number one, their subject number is one. Their gender is one, which means that they were male. One is one is male, two is female. And you have to keep track of that because when you get your statistical results, you have to know how you coded your variables in order to know how to interpret the statistic. So one of the other cardinal rules I was going to mention later, but I'll mention now is Keep track of how you coded your variables. That's another reason for having your variables all set up on a piece of paper or on a spreadsheet somewhere so that you remember how they're coded when they're in SPSS. Because when you run a statistic, you'll get a result. And if you coded this variable differently, you would interpret the same statistical result quite differently. So you always have to go back and interpret. And that means keeping track of what you're doing. And the third indicates here, the third variable here is the IQ of the person or subject. So if you look here, this means subject number one, what that person's gender was and what their IQ was. Subject number two, what that person's uh, subject number was, what their gender was and what their IQ was and so on. So you get the idea. Each column is a variable. This subject variable is a bit of a, a dummy variable, but it helps you keep track of each person that you've entered or each thing you've entered. And this is gender, and this is IQ. Any questions about this so far? And basically, the good news is, all you have to do when you enter your data is treat it like a spreadsheet, which is what I'm going to do now. I can click on any one of these cells, they're called, and change it if I wanted to something else, to a different number if I wanted to do that. I could change this. I can make it disappear and I can enter something else into it if I want to, like a 2. See? It's that easy. All I'm doing is working at my keyboard and changing that number. That's all I'm doing. And you can do that for any one of the cells. You can change them any way you'd like. Um, and that's one of the easiest things to do if you have a small data set. To code it in is just to code it in this way. I'm going to change it back to 1, though just because that's the way I had it originally. Now, I know what you're thinking. If you have a data set, how in the world did you, or how in the world does one, change the titles up here, right? Because initially when you start SPSS, from left to right, those columns were all labeled like these, VAR, VAR, VAR. How did you change that thing to a, a new variable name so you could keep track of what you're doing? And I'll tell you, that's an excellent question. What you do, well, there are two ways to do it, and I'm going to show you the 
the uh, sort of the safer way until you get used to SPSS. Remember, I told you there are two screens you can actually look at while you're entering data. You're in the data view screen. That is, it's going to show your data, each variable from left to right, and they're in a column, and each subject from top to bottom, from one to eight in this case. If you click on the variable view, it changes. It no longer shows you the data as you actually entered it, but it does show you each variable and how it's organized. So, for example, remember the first variable in our data set we call subject for subject number. Now, the good news is you don't have to worry about any of the stuff in this, what I'll call this variable view or variable organization screen, unless you want to. When you become proficient at SPSS and you would like to do many incredible fancy things with your data, then you can worry about all these. This tells you which kind of variable it thinks you are trying to enter, and most of the time you will be entering numeric variables. I recommend that you do that. Um, it will tell you how many width in spaces it will allow you know, the variable to appear. It will tell you the decimals and so on. You don't have to worry about any of that for the moment. The only thing we're going to worry about is how to change the name, which is the first thing, the name of a variable, and it's very easy. To change the name of a variable, all you have to do is double click on it. Once you've double clicked on it, all you have to do is use your cursor and your delete key or whatever it is you'd like to use to change the name. I am erasing that name, see, it's gone, and I can put a different name in if I want to right here. And you can do the same when you're in the variable view screen. You can change the original VAR uh, designation for any variable to any name you like. So I could change it from subject to bozo, I could change it to anything I wanted. But I recommend that you pick variable names that represent the variable that you were trying to measure. So that when you look at your data set, you can keep track of what it is you were doing. Because that's really the challenge in SBSS. It's keeping track of what in the world you were trying to measure and what you were entering. That's it. So keep your, I recommend keeping your variable names down to about eight letters. And to make them things that you remember so you can keep track of what you're, you're measuring. Sometimes when people are doing this, they'll say, oh, I'm going to be very, in quotation marks, scientific. I'll make my first variable V1. I'll make my second variable V2. I'll make my third variable V3. Are you getting the picture? V4. The problem with that is, now you've done all that and you feel very clever, but now someone says, what does V4 represent in your data set? I'm absolutely clueless. Do you remember what you were measuring? And you say, huh. It was either anxiety or the number of times people tripped over a banana peel per month. I don't really remember. You can't do that. So pick a name that will really help you remember whatever it is you measured for that variable and will save you time, effort, and so on later on. So I'm going to enter subject back in there and see if it will let me do that. So subject is back in there. Now, I've finished my work, and you, you will be doing this in your exercise. You will be relabeling all your variables, because initially in here, these first three places, it will just say VAR, 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 and you'll just click on those, and you'll change them. So I've finished my work in my variable view, and again, I don't recommend worrying about measurement scales. I don't worry, worry about alignment. Don't worry about the missing. We can learn about that later. Right now, just learn how to, met, to label your, your variable names so you can keep track of what you're doing because uh, you can learn all the rest of it, and most of it you don't need to change. Most of this you'll ne not ever have to change. So I'm going to click on this low tab down here. I'm going to go back to my data view. And there I have my variables again, uh, labeled the way I want, and I've got my observations all set up.